guys. So it's been a while since I did any PCB designs and I've been sitting on a few ideas and then out of the blue GLC PCB sent me an email asking if I'd like any boards um, to feature in a video. So I thought why not because as you can see I've used GLC a lot in the past and for all my boards. So the box arrived this week and got all my goodies and the first for me which was a stencil to use which I've never done before and I went for the new matte black boards and a few other panelized boards as well so those are going to be used for future videos but what I'm going to show today is a beginner's guide on going through the various processes on creating your PCB going from doing your schematic to converting that to a PCB layout and then just a few little things that you might need to do right through to ordering your board and what you need to look out for and that now this has ended up being a long set of videos so I kind of apologise but not apologise because it's just to cram everything in. So I've split this into three videos so rule VT. So to get going the first thing we're going to do is we are going to go to easyeda.com which will take you to this website and then you're going to click on Easy EDA Designer. If you haven't got an account you're going to have to create one and log in. And then what you're going to get is your default workspace, which shows your ongoing projects and any news of new versions or anything like that. And it'll tell you what's coming out. So the first thing we're going to do is to create a schematic. Now, that's what you want to use for your basis of all your PCBs. You can go straight doing the PCB itself, but then it's going to be extremely hard if it starts getting complicated design or if it starts needing any modifications and changes it's going to be a nightmare. So before we create that schematic, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new project. And the idea is to keep everything organized and out of the way. So we're going to create an LED Wemos project. And here you have an option to set it to private, so only yourself can view it and edit it. Or you could set it public, but you can always change that down the line if you wanted to share a design with someone. Okay. so. Because the schematic is that important, it takes you straight into the schematic page. It's normally a good idea to say, set the title. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go across to EE Lib, which is a built-in library of components. So what we need first is a power supply. So we're going to click on this one here, which is a barrel jack. So if I press space, I can rotate that component round to the orientation that I want it. So we'll do that there. Then up in the wiring tools, we're going to use the 5 volt, which is called a net flag. And so if we connect this here, and here we go. So if we place this here, then you'll notice it still says 5 volts. So we could place a few of these around. And then if you right click, it removes the selection. What you can do is, very much like a text editor, you can just do a bounding box, select a few things, and then I can hit delete. So what we're going to do to start with is connect the 5 volt line up with pin number 1. So I've clicked on the wiring tool there, and you'll notice if I zoom right in here, you get a dot, which signifies that you've kind of got it selected. Or you've got a connection there, and then we're going to connect that to pin 2. So then what we're going to need after that is a capacitor just to make sure we get some smoothing on that so I'm just going to leave that in that orientation there because the positive is on the 5 volt so we're going to connect up ground here and you notice I move down here and then when I move left it automatically puts a turn in the wiring and then we're going to intersect through the capacitor here and then we're going to right click now at the point we want to finish if you left click what happens is it just makes that a junction and then presumes you want to go from there. Now, when you do a right click, it stops on the location where it was. And then you'll notice we've still got the red cross here, and that means it would do another line. So if I right click and then right click again, it gets rid of that. And previous to before, we select that, we can just delete it. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a ground into the design here. And then we've placed that there. Again, it shows ground, right click, gets rid of it. One tip is if you want to place something be in conjunction with a line but be set back, rather than having to do an individual wire, what you can do is if you place the 5 volt there, and if we select it, and notice you need to have the text and the object selected, and then we drag that up, 
it's automatically going to put a turn. So in its most basic form, that's the input. And that's going to give us something on the five volt line and then something on the ground line. So what's a good practice to do is to put a rectangle around this element. In just in case I left click in there and then I'm going to get a text. Left click once again, right click to get rid of it. And if you double click it, you can edit the text there. So we're going to say power input. And then I just like to change the infill style to dotted line there. So that's a nice little self-contained module. And so if we changed anything with the input, we would just modify this one section and then we'd be good. So the next thing is we're going to use a custom part. So rather than use the A library, we're going to need to input a criteria. So I've searched for it previously. So if I search for Wemos Mini, you'll show see it shows user contributor parts. So what we're going to do is we're going to select one of these user contributor parts. And you'll notice there's many parts, but you do need to be aware that you need to check it to ensure that everything is all right with that part. Generally, you wouldn't have to for capacitors and other things, but it's handy to. Um, but you are going to have to do that with something like a Wemos D1 Mini. So we're going to select this little guy here. So you'll notice once I've selected them there, and I go back under the canvas. I can then left click once again, same as before, right click to get rid of that. But I cancel that, and then we're going to select him, and we're going to move him across here. So. For the Wemos, what we're going to need to do is to get some power in there. So if we place the 5 volt net flag here, left click once, then let go, and then we can drag it along, and I can even do a space there, and that's going to give us our 5 volt because we've already mentioned and the power input that 5 volt is connected to this jack. So we don't need to do a line directly between these two. And that's where, when you're starting out, generally a lot of people run foul and it creates a, a real big mess. So we're going to also connect up ground. And I'm going to right click there to stop that. And then we're going to do a ground there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to want to hook up an LED to D5. So we could do an LED here and then spin off the Wemos. But if you're starting to do that with a lot of circuits, it's going to get very messy in the same way that I mentioned about the power input. So one useful thing we can use is a net port. So if we get a net port here, and if we press it there, and then if we select them, drag them out, so we've got a small line there. I'm going to double click this, and I'm going to call this LED. So now that's the Wemos section finished. And this is just a very basic circuit. So I'll just be consistent and I'll change this dashed line. We're going to get text again. Click once, right click. And we're going to change this to Wemos. OK. So you know, to move around on PC, you're going to right click and that will move you around the schematic. If you've got a mouse with a scroll wheel, you can zoom in and out, which is very handy. So the next thing we're going to do is the LED. So we're going to use one of the built-in. I'm going to use the search command there. So here we go, we've got the LED. And again, we're going to press space to rotate that round. And so I'm just going to place him down there, right click to get rid of. So what we're going to do is, this is going to feed back to ground. And right click. And then we're going to feed this down here. Right click. Now, on the search pane, if you click the cross, it'll get rid of what you've been searching for. And we're going to put a resistor in there. You can either choose the EU or the US style there. And I'm just going to line up the edge of that directly there. I'll right click. And then what you can do is you can just modify the text to signify what level of resistor you're going to have. And then what we are going to do is another net port. And the idea is that will match up with the net port I've already created. Now you notice it's automatically set the text as LED. And that's because it remembers the text of the last net port that you used. It's quite a handy little feature. 
So pre same as before, we're going to click there and then I'll drag him out. Now, this means again, as before, it's as if you've got a direct connection from this wiring line here to this wiring line here. So just for completeness, we are going to put a bounded box around there, put them at dashed and that's just my preference. And then we'll call this LED. And this is a nice tidy schematic. If we were to add anything else to D2 or D3, any other sensors, we could just do more boxes and you can expand things out and it makes it much easier to manage. So now we've got that, you'll notice that one thing we haven't done is saved the project. So we're gonna to go to file and we'll save. Because we'd already created the project, it's done that automatically and we've got this, it's called a cheat one, we can rename that. Just watching guys. I hope this has been of some use and what I'll maybe do is follow up with a, another more advanced video in the future so in some, showing some of the further techniques that you can use in the software and different options that you can choose such as stencil and things like on the checkout. Please feel free to like, subscribe and catch you later.